Hi, good afternoon. So I'm Hiroi, working with Colin in Imperial College. I'm doing a very long postdoc over the five years or so, including two maternity leaves. And um, last time I attended this PyDirect workshop was probably six, seven years ago. So I'm very happy to be back in this 10-year uh, anniversary workshop. In this talk, uh, I'd like to talk about something interesting from the application side using a parallel in time method and a phase averaging technique on nonlinear shallow water equations. Uh, a paper with the same title is published in Quarterly Journal of Royal Meteorological Society. And today I'd like to talk about what we've done in this paper and also a bit about how we are getting on from that point at the end of this talk. Right, so if you already know some of the parallel in time methods, you probably first think of something like parallel when you hear about this parallel in time, which where the solution at different time steps are solved in parallel. This kind of uh, parallelization we call parallelism across the steps. But here we consider a different kind of parallelization. This is the kind of word I can't, still can't pronounce after 10 years living in the UK. Uh, parallelization in time. Another way to parallelize the model in time, which is uh, called parallelism across the method. In this type of parallelization, the solutions at different time steps are not calculated in parallel. Instead, the solution within each time step is parallelized. For example, uh, some of the parallel higher order, some of the higher order Runge-Kutta methods have lots of stages, and if some of the stages are not related to each other, we could calculate in parallel within the each time step. And then what we do in this in this talk is kind of massively parallelized version of that kind of computing parallelization within each time step. Now. The other method we are exploring in this talk is the phase averaging method. The idea behind phase averaging is to find the time integration method where we can robustly take larger time steps for highly oscillatory equations by averaging the nonlinearity over fast oscillations. The good thing about this uh, averaging is it filters the fast motions while still capturing the long time trends in the dynamics. So it provides slow models where we can take larger time steps, such as uh, quasi-isiostrophic equations. And the important thing here is that this phase averaging can be combined with the parallelism across the method, the one I just talked talk about, which is parallelizing within each time step, in the averaging process. So let's see how we can apply it on the nonlinear shadow water equations and where exactly we parallelize the model in time. Right, so we have shadow water equations again. Uh, the difference is now we have eta instead of d, which is um, surface elevation. And then we also got the b, which is the topography. So the depth is equal to the, the mean layer h plus eta minus b. And then first we do, what, what we do first is separating the equation in the linear part and the nonlinear part. And now all the linear um, terms, which is in blue, are in L, and the rest is in N. And the large U contains both prognostic variables, which is uh, velocity and the surface elevation. To introduce the phase averaging, first we, we introduce a coordinate transformation where the transformed variable v is equal to the uh, e to the minus lt times u. And then we can rewrite the equations in v like this equation. These guys are the equivalent, and then it's very easy to um, derive. And so far, we just rewrote the equations. And before doing the averaging, we do one more preparation, which is introducing a finite interval s into the equation, so that V is now depends on both T and S. We can now average the equation by integrating the equation over S and taking the limit. 
And here's a nice schematic about the phase average model. This B bar is now filtered and then filtered fast motions uh, so that um, we can take a larger time step in the average model because the fast wave CFO condition is not present anymore. Right, so what I just talked about is the original phase averaging, which removes all the fast oscillations by taking the limit of t to the infinity. And what Horton Wingate 2014 suggested is that instead of taking the limit of t to the infinity, we put some weight function rho there to be able to do the finite scale phase averaging. In this version of averaging, if t approaches to zero, that recovers the original non-averaged equation. And then sending t to the infinity, we have the original phase averaging model. And choosing a finite t uh, removes the fast oscillation within that uh, time period, which is called averaging window. And um, what we can do now is by replacing this integral by numerical quadrature, uh, we can calculate these terms in parallel because the terms in this sum can be evaluated independently. Um, in the code, we use the ensemble parallelism capability of Fiedrich that allowed us to do it in parallel. Right. So after Horton Wingate proposed that uh, finite scale phase averaging, uh, Pedal et al. analyzed the phase finite scale average model, and then he found that there's a, there's a optimum average window t given a chosen time spe stepping scheme and time step size. Here's the nice schematic uh, I borrowed from his paper. Uh, which is probably the most important figure in my entire talk. Uh, what this says is that uh, there are two error sources in the average model. One is the averaging error, and then the other one is time stepping error. So the time step error decreases as we take the larger averaging window as fast oscillations are removed, while the average error goes up as we increase the averaging window. Therefore, uh, there should be a sweet spot called optimum averaging window, yeah? uh, where the total error is uh, minimized. We call this um, curve pedal plots, and this is what I will use to analyze our model later in this talk. So to see this pedal plot, uh, the important thing is the x scale is average window, and then time step size is always the same. So it confused me for a while that um, this is not the time step size, it is, this is not t. We fix the time step, and it's just changing the average window. And by changing the average window, we see uh, where the uh, minimum error is. And um, so below the optimum averaging window, the time-stepping error dominates, and the above the optimum, the averaging error dominates. And what he also found is um, uh, if we use more averaging, which means uh, larger average window, um, we need more quadratic points in the averaging. And for larger time steps, steps the optimum uh, averaging window t also gets larger. So in other words, uh, what we want to do is um, we use large averaging window, which should be uh, should allow us to take larger time steps, and then by using parallelization to calculate those quadrature points, we can in theory don't sacrifice the speed of the model. So that's the story behind um, the this 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 project and our ambition is using a uh, larger time uh, by using uh, more averaging try to take larger time step without uh, sacrificing the speed and also capturing the long-term trends um, and then um, 
uh, Hopri tried to uh, make use of that massively parallel computer. Um, and that first we examined the impact of this average technique on the rotating shallow water equations. That's what we've done in the paper uh, in Quarterly uh, uh, Journal. Okay, uh, because I don't have much time, I just uh, very briefly talk about the numerics. This is, uh, we are using RK4 scheme, and because we have two equations in U and the transform variable V, uh, we first apply RK4 scheme into the V equation first, and then bring it back U. We do that a couple of times in each stages, and then we end up uh, having this equation. That's what we are doing in the model. And then we have loads of exponentials in T and S. And then uh, uh, there are a couple of ways to implement these um, exponentials, but uh, in this particular paper, we are using Chebyshev approximations by um, using the recurrence variation. And then basically, with larger um, averaging window requires more terms, and then that requires more parallel uh, calls and then more time. So that's how we parallelize the um, calculated these um, exponentials in this paper, and then that's where the parallel is going on as well. Right, so the results, uh, this, we use the same test case, Williamson 5, uh, Colin was just showing, uh, mesh refinement level 5, and then we're using these spaces for velocity and height, um, RK4 for the time integration, and then delta t is 900 seconds, this is fixed. And then we just choose the average window one hour to start with, and then I'll change the average window to see how it goes in the model. Uh, for reference solution, we um, borrowed a solution from standard semi implicit <coughs> model, and then because we are talking about the time integration method and then try to see the accuracy of it, we, we use the solution using very small DT in the standard model and then compare the solution. Right. Uh, this is PB at day 15. Um, the test case is basically flow blows and hit the mountain and then goes around. And at day 50, lots of nonlinearity kicks in and then we see a beautiful pattern which is expected. And then what I do is taking the um, calculate the error. This is error in the eta surface elevation, taking the norm of it and then change the average window and then plot the better plots. What's the, um, yeah. uh, like how big is 6.5? How big is the original solution? Uh, so this is um, Maybe just oh, back like e to, the, e to the 2 or so. That's the original solution. OK, so it's Yeah, yeah it's, it's small. Yeah. I mean, sufficiently small compared cool. to this um, mesh resolution. And then this is the better plots. So, we have two lines here. One is in velocity, one is in the surface elevation. We see the sweet spot here. Uh, so the model kind of shows you know, the results according to the theory. OK. And then here, um, in this figure, I was basically just changing average window and the time step fixed at 900 seconds. <coughs> but in the next video, I'm, I'm changing the time step as well to see how the model uh, behaves according to the time steps. And then this is 900 seconds, and then slightly increase and slightly decrease. And then we can see that um, when the DT is small, average window, the sweet spot is also small. And then when we use um, large average window, the size of the DT doesn't matter. It's just averaging error dominance, the model. And then when I compare to the standard model solution, it's uh, surprisingly the average models are more accurate at the early days. And then because um, a lot of things are still happening in L, and then we only average the end part, so that what I've done in the paper, and I believe that I have a couple of minutes to talk about what we are getting on from there. So we confirmed an optimal version window in the model, 
and I found that average model is quite accurate at the early days. But uh, what we couldn't do in that model was like, uh, we wanted to push the DT limit, that's what we wanted to do. But somehow we couldn't take a larger time step more than 900 seconds or a bit more than that. So to see what's going on, uh, we tried moving the mean flow advection into L. Maybe there's a fast mean flow in the background and that's um, breaching the CFO condition. And then we also used the parallel, or just as Joshua was talking about, but the serial version is because parallel version is uh, not quite ready to implement for this application. So, uh, I reproduced the uh, Wengelson 5 result using the new model, which is using uh, move the mean flow into the L and then use power dialog. And then DT equals 900 seconds to start with to reproduce it. Uh, same result, basically, flow hits the flow mountain and it goes around. And then the, our old version in the paper blew up when I increased the DT to the double, like uh, 0 0.5. But now we can take uh, one hour, which is great. And then model runs stably for 15 days. The result almost looks the same, but uh, there is a difference. If I see the norm, this is the standard model reference, and this is, um, they are both using 900 seconds. And then the middle is using one hour in the average model. So it goes up, but at the end of the calculation, it's still comparable with the standard model result, even though we are using four times larger time step, which is quite impressive. And then, can we take even bigger time steps? Um, to see that, I went down to uh, refinement, refinement level from five from three, five to three, like a four times bigger kind of DT, because the model is very slow. The prioritization is not proper yet. So I just, uh, so how uh, we can get larger time step at the coarser version of the model. In this uh, refinement level, standard model grows up at dt equals 3, and then we kind of know that average model would work at the same dt level. And then I double the dt and see uh, how large dt we can take in the average model. This is dt equals 3 hours, where the standard model always grows, already grows up. 6 hours worked. 12 hours, and uh, we actually managed to take 24 hours at level three by using a very large average window. We can see that like a tip is now kind of smoothed out, averaging definitely kicked in, but at the same time, the feature long time trend is definitely captured, and we are kind of excited to see how it works at level five. Right, this is a summary, and then evaluation of accuracy and the product step to follow in the later paper. Thank you very much. So we can have an NWP model with 24 hour times, is that what you're saying? Uh, <laughs> At refinement level 3. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, is the approximation of the exponential of the cherry shape the main computation cost and how many steps do you uh, What's the order? Uh, so, yeah, Ch Chef's Chef bit was definitely um, the, the heavy part of the model. And uh, the, how many Chef's Chef um, well, was a massive hundred or less. We cut out the, um, the, the last bit so that um, it's within the hundred or hundred times or so. Otherwise, the model took, took, took too long. So we set the limit and then cut out the uh, higher frequency, frequency bit. So maybe it wasn't clear. So the, new, the new formulation doesn't use chip shape. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. The new formulation is using the serial version of Parodia. So we, we basically <coughs> abandoned chip shape in the new version. Any other questions? Um, was there a clear like, ratio or scaling of how much the optimal window increased when you increased your time scale? Because um, when, like in the last spots, when you've gone from three hours to six to twelve hours from before, your optimal window increases. Ah, uh, so the averaging window. Hours. Yeah. So, so it's it's basically if our averaging window is let's say calculated by some factor alpha times dt. Yeah. And then alpha is two here, and then we I need to I I was able to use factor two at six hours, but. I had to use factor 4 at 12 hours and factor 2 at 12 hours and factor 4 at 24 hours. 
So on average, mean it grows exponentially. Yeah. Um, that, but that's not even for error, is it? That's just for stability in order to. Uh, to yeah. Know it doesn't blow up. So I have to take a um, bigger average window to make it stable. If average window is 24 hours or so, it grows up. When you've got these very large time steps, do you know how close to the convective CFL limit you're getting? Oh, I still haven't looked into that. I think we've got the same, same question. But yeah, I should look into it. I guess that's the limit of, or should I say, is that the limit of how well you can expect to do? Uh, not sure I answered the question. Because you're still treating the non linear terms with this arcade scheme. Yeah. So is the normal convective CFL limit the, the, the largest time step you could expect to be able to do? This, this must be beyond it. Yeah. This well, is a whole day. So, so we subtracted the mean, the eviction by the mean flow. So, so, oh, so, yeah. so part of the eviction is now inside the L. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. if we don't do that, then it, we, can't, we can't run with this time step for, for there because of the CFL. Yeah, okay, great. In fact, one of the problems with the shallow water equations is the splitting between the convective time scale and the wave time scale is not that big, in fact. So, you were uh, sort of doing this kind of splitting and you still kind of bump into the, the non linear time scale quite quickly. So, it's, it's, not, it, it's a bit different than the 3D. All right, thank you again, uh, speaker.